Hello everyone, this week we're going to be doing a 10 minute painting of a beaver. As you can see, I've already got some line work uh, put down and I've done that using watercolour marker pen. And what I'm doing at the moment is coming in with a half inch flat brush and I'm using the Atelier Interactive Acrylics, quite a dilute mix. This is just pure burnt umber and I'm applying thin washes of that colour everywhere where I see the deepest shadows. But I'm keeping things very, very simple. So each patch of shadow is a fairly simple shape. So for example, if you look at the nose of the beaver, in reality, that's quite a complex shape, but I've simply depicted it as kind of a curved rectangle. The other thing I'm doing is I'm moving my brush in the direction that the hair on the beaver falls. And that's gonna help create a sense of texture automatically. Because the paint's quite dilute, you can see that as I move my brush, I leave a whole range of little lines in the paint. And in addition to that, the edge of each brush stroke, especially when the paint starts to run out, as you just saw there, um, it, it leaves, leaves a nice frayed edge to that patch of paint. And that also helps to create the illusion of fur. And I'm, I'm continuing to do that on the, the front limb of the beaver there. As you can see now on the back of the beaver you can see that that little bit of brown escaped the blue outline that i put down now that was quite intentional because when you look at an animal especially an animal that's been in the water or has been cleaning itself recently or maybe just living in the wild um, you know their fur isn't perfect and there will be little regions little tufts of hair that are sticking up and all of those little touches just here and there um, you, you don't want too many of them, but including those helps to sell the sort of uh, reality of the image. So continuing on with this burnt umber, we're now working on the tail. And as you can see, you know, what I'm doing is treating this very much as just a tonal piece at the moment. So keeping things quite simple and just using the burnt umber for the shadows and allowing the white of the paper to show through the paint for the highlighted regions. And having applied that treatment to the entire animal, I've now mixed up some yellow ochre paint with a little touch of cadmium red, and I'm adding that warmer color to the regions where there's more of an orangey brown on this little rodent. And once again, if you look at the top of the head, I put a little couple of dashes of the yellow ochre red mix just escaping the blue outline, again, just to suggest a couple of little tufts of fur. Next up, I've switched to a darker mix of paint, and I created this one with a little touch of cadmium red, some ultramarine blue, and then a little touch of the burnt umber that I was using before. And once again, I'm keeping the paint quite thin, so by applying these transparent washes, you get some automatic mixing of colours where you overlay one wash on top of another. And I'm using this to further deepen the shadows in some areas. I'm also working on a slightly smaller scale to usual. I'm just using A4 paper. Normally, you know, for these videos, I'm using at least A3 and often, and often A2. Uh, but what I found is that for these short 10 minute demos, it makes my life a lot easier basically to work on a slightly smaller scale simply because, you know, animals are quite a complex composition of shapes and tones and colours. And, and the bigger the painting you've got to do, you know, the more time it takes. It's that simple. You've just got more area to cover. So that's why I've switched to the smaller size. Notice also that I ha I'm not including any details at this stage. I'm keeping things simple and treating things just tonally for the most part. Obviously, I'm adding more colour as I go, but I'm treating things just as if they're shapes of tone or shapes of colour. So it's a really good tip, I find, to it doesn't matter what you're painting. If you can detach in your mind from what you're painting and look at it instead objectively as a pattern of shapes and colours, then I find when I do that, I do, I do my best work. But now I'm adding some highlights, or beginning to at least. And this 
Um, this is being done with a mixture of titanium white and a touch of ultramarine blue. You'll often find that when you have uh, an animal which is perhaps a little bit wet um, or just has dark fur, the, the sky will reflect on that wetness of the fur and that, will show, that reflection will often show up as a, quite a deep blue. So we're just picking out little highlights as we move around this little critter. And you can see there where I put down that pale blue on top of the dark background for the tail, some of that darker colour is showing through. So it's, it's quite, a, a, uh, quite a quick way to get a lot of subtle variations in colour and tone. Just this overlay of very thin washes, especially when there's texture within each layer of paint. So you get not only colour upon colour, but texture upon texture. So that's it pretty much done with the flat brush now. So to do the smaller details, I've switched to a small round brush. And obviously that's advantageous because it does come to a better point than the, the flat brush. You can use the corner of the flat brush to, to give you points as well and do little details. But on this scale, I find I do need a round brush. So that's why I've switched to that one. So I just put in the dark of the eye, some shadow in the ear, just indicated the nostrils on the little nose there. And a couple of lines around the mouth area. So this dark colour is a mixture of the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I'm just kind of tidying up some of the outlines of some of the rather loose brushwork I, I'd done earlier, I did earlier. So I'm almost drawing now on top of my painting. Started off with a loose, very rough drawing, painted on top of it, and now I'm almost drawing on top of that painting. But I don't want things to get too defined. I still want this to be a loose uh, study. So for example, the temptation is to put a lot of detail into the eye, to put a lot of detail into the front paws, and that's something I, I want to avoid. So obviously we're going to need a little bit of detail in there just so that they're better defined than they are, but you know, not too much. Now for the white of the eye, I'm actually using titanium white with a little touch of the blue that I used earlier. And that gives a nice off white. So when you're using the pure white, you really want to reserve that for the very brightest part of your painting. The trusty, the trusty fingertip there used to remove uh, a bit of paint I felt I put on a little too heavily. And I'm continuing with that same light blue colour to just pop in the highlights and define the claws on the paw there a little more clearly. And just moving around the animal, adding a few little highlights here and there, keeping in mind the contours of the surface that I'm painting and not dragging the brush too heavily across the surface of the painting. So I'm getting a variation in how heavily the paint is put down within each brush stroke. And as you just saw, there was another bit there that I just I just wiped off. But I'm coming in now with some pure ultramarine blue, added some of that to the, the dark part of the eye there, the pupil. And I'm using some of that to add to the shadows in the ear and also around the front paws as well. So this little beaver painting is getting close to completion. As I said at the beginning, we're trying to do it in around about 10 minutes. I think I'd probably go over by a few seconds. But the it's really good fun, though, to, to keep experimenting in this way with different subjects. And I've actually been doing a few sketches um, of late of beavers using a biro 
and an alcohol-based grey marker. Um, I'll put some links to those as well uh, below the, the, vi uh, the video. And what I'm doing at the moment though is coming with a larger frayed round brush and just tapping on some almost dry burnt umber to give a little bit of texture around the snout. A little touch of pure titanium white in the eye. And then I've switched to Biro now. I mentioned Biro a moment ago, so but switched to Biro and I'm just using that fine line. A bit fiddly to do with the brush on this scale, certainly in the time period anyway. Notice I'm making this whisker dashed, um, but the others I'm putting in a solid lines, an array of directions and curves. And this is actually a blue biro, so I haven't gone for black, just a blue biro. A couple of lines on the animal itself. And that's this little beaver painting pretty much done. So here's the finished uh, version, as you can see. As always, I'll pop the link to the high resolution version on my website below the video. So if you want to get a closer look at the brushwork, uh, then please feel free to click on that and have a look. If you have any questions at all, as always, remember to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then please remember to hit that like button. And as always, if you're new here, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell after you've hit the subscribe button. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks again.